Hey, this is Gleb Bakhmutov. Recently, I've seen this question that David asked on Gitter channel. He's trying to extract prices from a row of a table and then confirm that the quantity times the price is equal to what's displayed as the sum. So is there a better way than writing something like this where you get the row and within the row you use get again and invoke the data to save it as an alias and then you have to get the alias and use then call back Pyramid of Doom to get the values to confirm. And yes, there is a better way. So I prepared an example where I have a table, name, price per item, number of items, and then the total sum that we want to check. And I want to show how this all works. So for example, let's see if we can let's say select the second row of this table and confirm that, for example, for chips uh, with a price of $3.99 per item, the total for two items should be $7.98. Okay. First, we need to get to a row. So I'm using the ID of a table, then T body and the row, because there is also a row in the header, and we don't want that. So once we get to the rows, we get all the rows. So we probably will select say, the middle row, the second row using a command. And we can always double check by hovering over command. Yeah, that's the right row. Now we want to get individual cells. So we'll use find, which is a child command that finds us uh, TD elements. Now this will give us four elements, name, price per item, quantity, and total. So we immediately want to get individual dump elements. So that's why I will use the command called spread. And what it will do, it will give me each cell from previous command separately. So this will be name element, actual like make it dump element. Uh, I would say price element, quantity element, and total element. Let's see how this works. Perfect. Now from each cell, I need to get the text, because everything is a text here, and convert it to numbers. So name would be simply inner text. What about price? Well, price would be price element in a text. But then it has the dollar sign, so we want to replace the dollar sign with nothing. And then we want to convert this into a float. Okay. Now we get quantity, and this is just an integer, so we'll use parse int, and we get the total from the total element removing the dollar sign. Okay, time to write an assertion. Well, we expect price times quantity. Of course, for currency, we probably should use actual currency library, but in this case, it's fine. And let's give it a good error message, uh, total for... And then we'll use the name of the item. So the price times quantity should uh, expect it to equal total that we get from the row. Perfect. So we got four elements, as you can see, and we confirm total is correct. Well, what if you want to do the same for every row of a table, because we have to validate every row? Well, I would suggest we get the whole function that confirms the arguments. Uh, check sum, for example. Okay, we don't need extra syntax notation. Okay, so now we have check sum and we'll pass it. If we pass it to spread, then it will confirm just that particular row. But in this case, we don't want just the first row, right? So we'll remove this and instead we'll say each, right? And we get the row and we'll wrap it and then we'll find cells and spread this to check the sum. And now we are iterating over each row, confirming by getting the values of each cell, that the apples is correct, getting to the second row, confirming the chips, getting to the juice, confirming the juice. So this is how I would write something that deals with a lot of cells in each row.